Dr. David Freeman. I'm excited about 2017. You know, a new year means a fresh start, new beginnings. And today we talk about new beginnings and the importance of vision and persevering to see all those things that God has in store for us come to pass. You know, what is it that we're taking from 2016 into 2017? What are we willing to leave behind? It's going to take faith and it's going to take fight. But you know what? When we pursue God with all of our heart and passion, we'll see those things come to pass that He's wanting to initiate in our life. I'm looking forward to new beginnings. I'm looking forward to bringing that hope from last year into 2017 and seeing all of God's best this year. So 2016 has happened, and it was a great year. I'm so thankful for so many things that God did in 2016. And you know, sometimes we're really quick to move on to 2017 and throw 2016 behind us. But I think God always says it's important before you move on to stop and pause and just to think about all the good that God did in the year before. That this is a day that we can set a memoriam of 2016 and say, okay, God, what were all the wonderful things that you did in 2016? I love the testimony that Andy just gave, you know? And then, and then Frank, I don't know, Frank Howarth, is he here this morning? He, yes, he had a fantastic uh, testimony at prayer about having to go in to have something removed because they thought perhaps it was cancerous. When he went, they couldn't find it. You know, uh, we heard testimonies of employment. Alberto, you know, who, who was looking for a job and he was coming to the end and desperate for something, and God, you know, just brought him back to the same place with a promotion. And so there's so many great things that God has done in 2016. And I'm one of those people who I'm so much focused on going to where I need to go that I forget to actually pause and enjoy right now, what God is doing right now. And the mistake in that is sometimes you forget to see the good that God is doing on a daily basis. And you forget and you don't acknowledge or see even that God is doing some amazing things and working that sometimes we don't even notice because we're just so forward thinking. And so I just want to pause for a second for each and every one of us just to think of a few things. They might say count your blessings, whatever you want to call it. Just right now before we move forward into the message, I just want to stop and pause. And let everybody take some time to think about the good that God did in 2016. All right, so why don't we just close our eyes and just, just think of that. God, right now, we just come before you, and we just thank you for the good things that you did in 2016. God, we're not in a hurry to go into 2017 without recognizing your grace that was on us in this past year. Thank you, God. God, we thank you for your life, that we are here, that we are alive. Thank you for family. Thank you for friends. Thank you for what you've done at Jubilee, God, how you've brought us together, how you're knitting our hearts together, how your Holy Spirit is creating unity here in this church. Thank you, God, for providing. Thank you, God, that you hear our prayers, that you love us. God, there's so many things to be thankful for 2016. And so right now, God, as we close off 2016 in our hearts, as we turn to walk forward into 2017 right now, God, we say thank you. We say thank you, God. We are so grateful. We are so grateful for all that you've done. You are a good God. Lord, we look at all the great things that you've done, and we look at your promises right now, and we turn towards the future with hope and expectation, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So 2017, it is about to happen. And you know, the interesting thing about 2017 is that you don't have to worry about the future. You don't have to worry about the future. And this is why you don't have to worry about the future. Because a lot of times when we think about 2017, we think about what's ahead of us. Sometimes we start to think about circumstance. Well, what if this changes? What if that changes? What if... But here's the thing about the Word of God and what God actually says about us is that our future is really in our heart. That our future is really in our heart. 
So as we move forward, the first thing that we have to consider and the first thing that God is asking us to look deep into is our heart because this is what Proverbs 4.23 says. It says, keep your heart with all vigilance for from it flows the issues of life. And I think this is going to be fundamental moving into the next year because if we are focusing on our heart before God, if we are watching after our heart before God, it doesn't matter what the circumstances will say. We will always be victorious. We will always overcome. We will always walk through them. And we will come through them unscathed and unharmed and, 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 and with hope and with joy. Our heart is where the issues of life flow from. So the first admonishment that I want to give you for 2017 is how is your heart? How is your heart right now? Because God says guard your heart. And today is a good day to say, I am going to guard my heart moving into 2017. What I allow in my heart, what I feel, what I think, what I perceive, if it does not line up with the word of God in 2017, I will not let it in. I will not let my heart be dismayed. I will not be discouraged. I will not let disappointment take away the strength of God in my life. Because this is so important for us to understand that really your life is a result or consequence of what's in your heart. And so what's in your heart will determine how you face the struggles that come in 2017. I'm not going to stand here and say that there's not going to be issues in 2017 that you're going to have to face and work through. What I'm going to have to say, though, is that if your heart's in the right place and if it's connected to God, you're not going to have to worry about what comes your way in 2017. And that that's going to dictate how 2017 works and operates for you in this upcoming year. You know, oftentimes on New Year's Day like this or a New Year's message, the pastor has a word from God and has a particular word that is encouraging. And I, I appreciate that and I love that. And I think it's very important because God obviously does that to remind his people to lift their heads up again and look with expectation into the future to give them strength so they can stand up again and face the new year. I believe that God sets seasons and times for, on purpose. He understands that we need this new idea. And even though new year doesn't mean that we're brand new people, even though this new year flips over, it doesn't mean that we're, you know, all of a sudden a brand new. It gives us this hope and this expectation that we can move into something new. And there's an interesting verse where Jesus stands up in front of the temple in Luke chapter 4, and this is what he does. He opens up the book to Isaiah, and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The thing that I want to point out today is that Jesus Christ came. He died 2,000 years ago after proclaiming the favorable year of the Lord, which means that when he rose again from the grave, that this very thing that he was proclaiming was now set into perpetuity, which meant that it was something that was now eternal, that we don't have to wait for a word of provision in order for us to experience provision. We don't have to wait for a word of healing in order to receive healing. We don't have to wait for a word because all of those things were declared by Jesus Christ thousands of years ago. And every single day is a day of redemption. Every single day is a day of provision. Every single year, you can stand up and say, Jesus is to me what I need this year to have for me in this year. Because he proclaimed that thousands of years ago. So we stand in the favorable year of the Lord every year of our life. We stand in the favor of God every day of our life, that whatever we need is available to us every day. So I don't have a word of provision. I don't have a word of healing. I don't have a word of just one thing today. I have the fact and the scripture that says that Jesus already declared that whatever you need for this year is available to you if you will believe and trust him to be that for you. That's what this year is going to be. For those who will believe on Jesus Christ and stay connected to him, who will watch their heart and be connected to him who declared in your life that you are the healed, 
that you are provided for, that all your needs are met to do everything that God has called you to do, that you have the giftings and the callings inside of you to accomplish everything that God has for you to do. If you will believe that, this year will be that for you. That's as simple as it is. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And today, I want to encourage you, because that's what this day is about, is to give you the faith to stand up again and to believe that this is a time of new beginnings for you. That this is a time of new beginnings. A new beginning is something that God has put inside of each and every one of us, and it's something that he offers to us every day. You know why I know that? Because the Word of God says that his mercy is new every morning. That those who are in Christ, the old is past and the new has come. Do you realize that Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that he made for each and every one of us wasn't just a one-day thing and then it's done? You take the coupon, you submit it, and now it's gone? That's not how it works. No, this life that Jesus Christ gave us through his sacrifice is something that is residual every single day. Those who are in Christ. Are you in Christ today? Will you be in Christ tomorrow? Will you be in Christ the day after that? And that means that the old is gone yesterday. The old is gone today. The old is gone tomorrow. The old is gone. As long as we remain in Christ, all things are new. All things are new. This is a year of new beginnings. I want to encourage you to believe that. Perspective. This will be a year of new perspective. A new beginning on how you see things. You know, I sat down and I had a good talk with Jocelyn. And we had uh, Justin and Tamara over. They came and visited us. And, and, and uh, we had a great talk just about perspective on life. How sometimes it is so easy to see all the things that haven't happened that you were hoping to happen. And then you go into the new year and that over, overshadows everything. But the truth is, is that when you have a new beginning in Christ, there's certain things that yes, maybe there's a little bit of residue from 2016 from the decisions that you made, but that does not mean that things are not made new in you. There are things in 2017 that I'm going to have to deal with because I made choices in 2016. That does not mean that God does not make things new in you. What he's changing is your perspective so you can push through those things and have the wisdom to walk through and to change the direction of the course that you set in 2016. God is asking us to change the course. Or maybe you're on the right course, and this year is a year for you just to get a little bit of gas and go a bit faster. We're all at different points. We're all at different places. But the fact is, is that God wants to change our perspective every day. The Word of God is so clear to be renewed in our mind, the way that we think, the way that we see. Some of you, you want to see God like you've never seen Him before this year. I believe this is the year that that can happen. I believe that there's going to be a new beginning in your relationship with Jesus. It's okay, you know. It's okay to come to God and say, you know what, God, I, I feel like in 2016 some of my relationship felt a little bit stale. And God, this 2017, I want to make this new. Can we renew our vow? Can we renew our covenant? Because that's really what it is. It's coming to God and saying, God, I want to push through. I want to push forward. I want to see new things. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things passed away. Behold, all things have come new. Stay in Christ. I also believe that this is going to be a year that we're going to have to fight. I don't talk much about politics from the stage, from the pulpit, and I don't think it's improper to as a pastor, because politics is just simply how we manipulate moral law, and moral law comes from the Word of God in the first place, so I don't think politics is uh, off the table when it comes to preaching. I think that we have this is the perfect place to talk about politics. Because that's what laws do. Laws just say there's, there's a moral issue and we're going to make a law. And so I, I think politics is great to talk from the pulpit. 
But I believe that this year, we've already seen 2016, there's been some things that have changed and there's been some pressures and some manipulation. And I think 2017 isn't going to get easier for people who believe in Jesus Christ. I don't say that to bring fear. I say that because we need to be prepared. I say that we need to have an answer for the faith that is in us. I believe we're going to have to stand up. We're going to have to know why we believe what we believe. And just like there's going to be great times, there's going to be times where you're going to have to fight through to reach the promise that God is giving for you. And some of you are saying, I felt like I fought in 2016. What do you mean I have to fight again? This is where you have to take courage and take hope. Because you're going to have to fight for the things. You have an enemy who does not want you to experience the new beginning. I believe that at the end of this year, there's going to be some of you that are going to be doing different things in your life. And you're going to be doing things for God that you've been dreaming of for a very long time. And it's going to be like a new beginning, like you're going to transition from one thing into the next. I believe that's going to happen this year. And it's going to take some fight to get there. It's going to take some push to get there. Nobody ever said it would be easy. But you know what? This is why we have the Holy Spirit. This is why we have each other. I'm committing to you as your pastor that as you go through this year, that I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to support you and I'm going to help you find what that thing is and that new beginning in your life is. Some of you want to have dreams. Some of you want to have visions. Some of you are hungry for, this, for the supernatural. Some of you just want to be able to take your next step. Some of you want to have a change of character. Some of you want to be free from addiction. I believe that this year will be that year. You'll have to fight for it. You'll have to get that new perspective from God. You'll have to go to the Word. If we are not going to the Word of God, this is not a lazy man's change. It will not be a lazy man's change. These things just don't come by themselves. This will come from trusting and seeking and searching. There's going to be courage required. And we're going to have to pass up on convenience sometimes. In other words, the question is, how badly do you want to be where God wants you to be? How badly do you want to do what God's calling you to do? What are you willing to give up? Because I believe that's going to be part of the requirement in order to step through those new opportunities. Because there's going to be opportunities that come, and we're going to have to take them. We're going to have to make that choice. We're going to have to make that decision. New beginnings. It's a year of new beginnings. Joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And this is going to be fundamental in this year. This is where I personally have a lot of work to do. I am so focused on future that I hardly ever can enjoy the now. And sometimes I get so serious about life that I fail to have a little bit of joy. And joy is a choice. It just doesn't come. It's not, you can't just... Oh, wake up. Happiness, that's great if you want to be happy. I'd rather have joy. Happiness comes and goes. Joy is a choice. And that joy of the Lord is your strength. In other words, doing what God has called you to do is where you're going to find your joy. And that's where your strength is going to be. It's going to require that strength to push through this year. And this is actually a happy message. There's no place you'd rather be than in the will of God. There's no place you'd rather be than in the will of God. That's why it's so important to guard your heart. Because God reveals himself to your heart. He doesn't reveal himself to your mind. He doesn't reveal himself to your soul. He reveals himself to your heart. The Spirit of God reveals in the heart. And when it's in the heart, it's a part of you. And when it's part of you, Look out, because nobody's going to stop you, because it's who you are. I want to finish today with the story of Zacchaeus. I think this is such an awesome story. Did you know that the word Zacchaeus actually means pure? The Hebrew definition for Zacchaeus actually means pure. And Zacchaeus was a tax collector who people hated. In fact, as you read the story, you'll find out 
it's kind of ironic that he was called Zacchaeus. But in Luke chapter 19, it says, this, it says that Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And there was a man called Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. That was another reason why people probably hated him. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was and was, able beca- was unable because of the crowd, for he was small in stature. So I can just imagine some of his past rejection. Maybe that's why he became a tax collector is because he got bullied all of his life. And he's like, okay, well, I just, anyways, that's just me assuming. That was not scripture, by the way, nor was it inspired by the Holy Spirit. So, so he ran on ahead. So you see the short little guy running, running on ahead, okay. It says that he ran on ahead and he climbed up a sycamore tree so that he wanted to see Jesus. For he was about, Jesus was about to pass through that way. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw Zacchaeus. And he says, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for today I must stay at your house. And he hurried and came down and received him gladly. And when they saw it, they all began to grumble, saying, Jesus has gone to the guest, to be a guest of a man who was a sinner. And anyways, it goes on and says, Behold, the Lord... Zacchaeus says, Behold, Lord, half of my possessions I will give to the poor. If I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will give back four times as much. Talk about transformation. Talk about a heart change. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. And I think in many ways we can identify with Zacchaeus where we feel maybe unimportant or we feel like our past holds us to our identity of who we are. But Jesus comes by, and this is what I want to encourage you today. Today, Jesus is here, and I want you to believe that Jesus is saying to you today, in this year, I want to come to your house. I want to come to your house. Some of us have been sitting on the limbs of a tree, trying to find Jesus, trying to see Jesus. Where is he? And this year, Jesus is calling us down from that tree. He's saying, I want to come to your house, and I want to fellowship with you. So as we leave 2016 in the past, let's climb down the tree. Let's take the invitation that Jesus is giving us and trust that he wants to show up in our house and bring the transformation that we're believing God for this year. Because you know what? I believe that Zacchaeus had the name pure because God saw the end from the beginning. And God sees your end from the beginning, and it's a good end. If you'll just come down from the tree and trust him, give him your heart. Because you know what? We know that we don't just give Jesus our heart once. We have to give him our heart every single day. We have to give him our heart every single day. I'm not talking about eternity. I'm talking about to have that fellowship and that union and that closeness, to experience the fullness of who he is and he wants from us. We have to give him our heart every day. But Jesus is coming to this house. Jesus is coming to your house. And I'm excited about that. I'm excited about what God is going to do in Jubilee this year. I'm excited about what God is going to do in the hearts of each and every one of you. I believe there's going to be restoration and redemption. I believe some of you are going to step into things that you never thought you could ever do before. That there's going to be confidence that rises up inside of you. So let's guard our hearts this year. Let's remember where the life comes from. Do you remember the story of the woman at the well? Where Jesus said, if you'll just drink from the cup that I have, if you'll just... If you'll just let me give you the water, you'll never thirst again. Let's drink from that cup this year. 2017 is going to be a great year. It's going to have circumstances that don't seem great, but because our heart's in the right place, we'll move through them, and we'll see God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven this year. We're going to pray for strength. We're going to pray for renewed hope for 2017. And so as we pray, I just believe that the Holy Spirit is just going to impart in you a fresh desire to rise up 
and to, 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 to trust again, to, to believe God again for those dreams and those hopes and those things. Some of you are saying, I just want a dream. Today, as we pray for you, I believe God's going to instill a new dream inside of your heart. I believe that today you're going to walk out of here with a feeling of a fresh new beginning. So I'm going to pray, and then we'll open up the front. And then after the service is done, we invite you to stay and fellowship a little bit. We've got cookies and coffee. But right now, let's just trust that the Holy Spirit is going to move in the lives of everybody in this room. God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now. We thank you for every life that is represented here. God, 2017 holds a plan and a purpose for every single one of us. We want to know what that is. Some of us want to know you more. Some of us want to see, hear, to experience you in a new way. Some of us are still looking for jobs. Some of us, God, are trusting for healing. Some of us, God, need provision. Some of us just need hope. And God, as we pray today, as we trust, I thank you that your Holy Spirit will move through us and that there will be a spirit of encouragement that rises up inside of every heart here today. That every heart in this place would take courage. And Lord, that you would download inside of them the very thing that they need to accomplish and to grab hold of the thing that you've called them to take hold of this year in 2017. We thank you for your goodness, God. We trust you. We love you. In the name of Jesus, you make all things new. Thank you, God.